the planet is shaken by a terrible roar. Naples is wiped off the face of the Earth. The air in Europe is filled with sulfur that poisons all life. Traffic is paralyzed. The streets of San Francisco and Los Angeles are littered with drifts of volcanic ash. The west coast of the United States has been turned into a dead zone. This isn't the result of a nuclear bomb explosion. The Third World War hasn't started. An asteroid hasn't fallen on the planet. Two of the most famous supervolcanoes in the world, the Phlegraean Fields and Yellowstone Caldera, have exploded. Life on Earth will never be the same again. Any active volcano, such as the San Gay Volcano in Ecuador, can cause disaster and lead to thousands of victims. But a supervolcano is something much more powerful and dangerous. If you compare it with a regular one, it's like a rocket launcher next to a simple gun. A supervolcano doesn't erupt, it explodes. And this explosion exceeds the power of ordinary volcanic eruptions by several thousand times. Most of the Phlegraean fields are underwater and are located northwest of Naples. This is a region above a huge magma reservoir with an area of 400 square kilometers. That's 154 square miles. The explosion of such a supervolcano would release energy comparable to the explosion of 2,700 Tsar Bombas. That's 158,000 megatons in TNT equivalent. As a result, a cavity would form on the surface of the water, in the center of which a giant water column would appear. If it collapsed, it would create a wave more than 30 meters or 98 feet tall, about the height of the famous statue of Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro without its pedestal. The wave could overcome the Gulf of Naples in just 15 minutes and wash away a city already destroyed by the eruption. Anyone who got hit would die instantly. That's about one million people. But that's not all. The air in Europe would be filled with sulfur particles that would poison all living things. And it's not just the smell. The sulfur would make it difficult to breathe. As a result of the mega eruption, about 500 cubic kilometers or about 120 cubic miles of solid particles could be released into the atmosphere. It would be mostly ash, which wouldn't melt by itself like snow. It could clog your respiratory system, as well as disable various mechanical systems. You probably wouldn't be able to just get in a car and drive away from the effects of the eruption. Your car wouldn't work anymore. But much more dangerous would be the ash left in the atmosphere. Blocking the sun's rays, it could lead to a volcanic winter. Most likely, the temperature would fall by 5 to 6 degrees Celsius. That's 9 to 11 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is much more serious than it seems at first glance. Also, an eruption could cause a rise in the level of the world ocean by 140 centimeters or 55 inches. Coastal cities and agricultural areas would be flooded. For example, you could immediately say goodbye to Venice. It would go underwater like the mythical Atlantis, and with it, Amsterdam and Hong Kong. All of this is like a real apocalypse, though the Phlegraean fields are currently behaving calmly. But to date, enough magma has accumulated under the supervolcano for an extremely powerful eruption. In just a few months, magma has risen to 3 kilometers or 1.8 miles from the Earth's surface, and its movement continues. The catastrophe is getting closer. But this giant isn't the worst natural time bomb of all. The Yellowstone Caldera is located in the northwestern United States. It's believed that it's dying, but this doesn't mean that there won't be another final eruption. 
This has been said by two American geologists, Ilya Bindman and John Valley. According to them, the explosion of the Yellowstone caldera will be about two and a half thousand times more powerful than the eruption of Mount Etna, the highest active volcano in Europe. In terms of power, this would be comparable to almost 15,000 Tsar Bombas, that is 875,000 megatons in TNT equivalent, five times the blast power of the Phlegraean fields. The explosion could shoot out streams of red-hot magma to a height of more than 50 kilometers or 31 miles and be accompanied by a powerful earthquake. It would be felt in all parts of the world. In the first minutes after the start of the disaster, all life within a radius of more than 700 kilometers or 435 miles could be destroyed. The states of Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana would cease to exist. Utah, Nevada, and Colorado would also be affected. 90% of all living things there would die, most of them from suffocation and hydrogen sulfide poisoning. The entire west coast of the United States would be covered with volcanic ash and turned into a dead zone. Most likely, three or four hours after the Yellowstone disaster, dozens or even hundreds of volcanoes around the world would begin erupting. The eruptions would cause a tsunami up to 40 meters, that's up to 130 feet high, which would wash away every Pacific and Atlantic coastal city. For example, Los Angeles and New York. But what would happen immediately after that would lead to the partial extinction of humanity. Within a day, acid rain would begin pouring over the entire North American continent, which would destroy most of the vegetation. Volcanic emissions would lead to the formation of an ozone hole over the mainland and give access to solar radiation. It would take two to three weeks for clouds of ash to cross the Atlantic and Pacific. In a month, they would block the sun from the entire Earth. The temperature of the atmosphere would drop by about 11 degrees Celsius, or almost 20 degrees Fahrenheit. A cold snap and severe earthquakes would disable most of the pipelines, power lines, and railways. In total, more than 2 billion people would die as a result of the cataclysm. The duration of the volcanic winter, if people didn't interfere with the process, could be about four years. Due to changes in the climate and usual way of life, people would have to learn to survive. And there's no guarantee that we would succeed. Is there any way to prevent such a disaster? It seems that the only thing we can do is prepare. But science doesn't stand still. And maybe scientists will soon be able to neutralize Yellowstone. Moreover, thanks to science, today you can even find out what different planets look like from the inside. Or, for example, what the planets would look like if they were between the Earth and the Moon. What would you like to learn about in the next release? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell. We have a lot of interesting things ahead of us.